Hello, operators, whether you're tier one or tier none, you're welcome here. I was the white motorcycle policeman. The greatest compliment that the CEO of Craigslist ever gave me was he heard a reporter, uh, I think it was CNN actually, a, say, complain after the interview with him. I couldn't get him to say what I wanted him to say. Oh, that that's that should be on your wall. That should be <laughs> that, was, you. that should be up on the wall. Well, I, I have to say, Craig Newmark's endorsement is on our website. So oh, we, I've seen that as, so, as, we, as it should be. Yeah. So we've done the training. This critical event has happened. Uh, you've got me in front of cameras. I'm answering the questions. The employees are doing the right thing. They're sending people to our spokesperson. Mm -hmm. I should be on the. I should be on the attack. Not the attack. That's not the right word. I should be proactive, shouldn't I? Should I be reaching out? What I mean. Well, you've got you've got messages for all of your stakeholders, your friendly ones. Your your you've got general messages for everybody, and then you're going to have some audience specific messages that might be particular to. If you're an NRA, to your members, obviously, and uh, and you then you monitor for feedback, and based on the feedback, that and also you're monitoring social media to see what people are saying. You adapt your messaging, but you don't go initially. You're what you're trying to do is funnel everybody to the place where you tell the story your way. And the whole goal of all your outreach is to say, go read this website that we've created. And we've talked up till now about the in-person things, but I understand you've got a team in the backward that's backward background that's monitoring social media, print, uh, other news outlets everywhere. And are you addressing those? You, yes. You've got a team. Yeah, and we've actually got a, a new uh, contractor we're working with that can do some fascinating things using AI to screen social media for particular terms. Outstanding. And it can really, and he, he's actually primarily using his business to help employers screen potential employees. But it has, I immediately spotted the use it could have for threat assessment. And, uh, and we're talking about that now. So I think we'll be able to actually add that service to our manual screening in the near future. And you're going to love that as the person managing the crisis. The attorneys are going to love that. And the client, the person you've chosen, the spokesperson is going to love having all this information so they can see where you're trending. What you've got to have intelligence. Got, you've got to have intel to make good decisions. Outstanding. I, I'm so fired up. Uh, if those of you listening and you're in business, I want you to go to the website. I want you to check it out. If you see the value in this, don't wait for something to happen. I'd want Jonathan's name and number in my phone and when i call him at three in the morning i'd want him to know who i was when i called what my business is about i want him to have already done his remote survey i don't want him to do all that stuff because i tell you things happen so fast you watched our show we've talked about critical incidents how fast did that happen how fast did their whole life turn around how fast were their cameras in front of their house the same can happen with your business it can happen anyway so i would like to Tell me what it's like. I go to your website, I reach out and contact you, and I tell you, hey, I'm ABC Company. Uh, sign me up. What's the first thing I need to do? And how much of a time, me as CEO, could, do I pass this off to somebody else in the company other than the training you're going to give me? Mm -hmm. uh, what's that look like? What's a time frame look like? There's a very clear process established for response, how the crisis, you'll have a core crisis management team for the organization. The, the people who respond to any crisis, and then maybe you've got some team members who are for specific crisis. Maybe you need an engineer for a particular type of thing. Maybe you need a ballistics expert for a particular type of thing, whatever it is. So you have those all lined up in advance. And so at that point, you know all of your resources, you have all of your messages, and it's just a question of applying the right resources to the situation. So if I retain you today, I'll be hearing from these folks in the next hours and days as we prepare. For, if I, I'm just talking about an eventuality, not something yeah. that's going to happen in real time. So I know that I'm going to have, I'm going to learn compassion, confidence, and competence. And there, there's another, there's also a related to that. There are what we call the five tenets or five laws of crisis management. And once again, there's those five. Are your, those are on your site. Yes. And and be, and uh, and there, there are five of them because I made up this list too. So there you go. And here's the rules. And you've already referred to the first one a lot. It needs to be prompt. Communication needs to be prompt because in the absence of communication, 
rumor and innuendo fill the gap. Absolutely. And we see that every day, every day, right? Every minute of every day. All I have to do is go to Twitter right now and I would see it. So, uh, and Twitter is the lead in rumor and innuendo, of course, but it goes elsewhere too. And, and you hear need... that, folks, Twitter is the lead in rumor and innuendo. Well, it's just, it's just, it's the first place anybody goes these days to just share whatever's on their mind, whatever alleged facts they have. And, and often with no link to any substance whatsoever. But if they get picked up, if it goes viral it, it, on the internet, it's not a question of truth. It's a question of perceived credibility. Just as an aside for my followers, I'm not allowed to go on Twitter. <laughs> I have been forbidden from going on Twitter. I, uh, I'm not even allowed to post stuff on our YouTube. I don't even know the password for our YouTube channel because they think I'm going to comment on other people's things, which I would do. If they get <laughs> but uh, you, yeah, you, you've got to um, back to the list. Prompt was the first one. Compassion is the second. It's on that list as well. So compassion is very important because if you don't deal with people's feelings, they won't listen to the facts. And I'll give you an example from real life. Uh, are you married? I'm embarrassingly available. Yes. Okay. Well, have you been in committed? Smiling, aren't I? Oh, have you, yes. Have you been in committed relationships before? Oh, absolutely. Have you ever tried if to resolve a, a disagreement based on only addressing the facts and tell someone these are the factual reasons why you shouldn't feel bad? Yeah, that doesn't work. It doesn't work well. That doesn't work well. Particularly, doesn't work well with our partners, spouses of any kind. But uh, it it doesn't work well with audiences. Period. So compassion is so critical. So prop, compassionate, interactive. Communication needs to be interactive these days. You need people need to have a way to give you feedback and you need that intel. So you need that, to that's that is I'm sorry to interrupt you, but yeah. Instagram we have a lot of fun with. On Instagram, I get so frustrated with these guys who get in the middle of something and what do they do? Turn off commenting. They share their, and I know it's got to be a pain in the butt. To ma I don't have that problem to manage 5,000 comments, 500 comments, 30 comments. I'm lucky on a good day keep those comments coming. But seriously, they turn it off. So I'm thinking, yeah, you're just pontificating, telling me something, and I want to interact with you, and it says commenting has been limited for this post. Yeah, it's the same as saying no comment. Yeah. You exactly. hear that, folks? Don't turn off your comments. Mr. Bernstein yeah. has directed you not to. Yeah. Now, if you're being, you know, you, that is sometimes necessary to block a user who is violating your terms of use. And it's, uh, you should know that the default terms of use, for example, on Facebook are not nearly adequate to protect you. You need to have, if you have a company webpage, you should have a terms of use on it that makes it clear what you will not accept. So that when you say get personally attacked, because that's not acceptable, then everybody else using your, your page will understand when you delete a user. Because yep. that person violates. So but if you, you just that, do it, if you do it randomly, then you get criticized. So put that on your corporate page, and make reference to it on your Facebook page. It will put it. On, put you should have terms you use for each of your points of presence on online. Perfect. That makes Cor sense. corporate page, Facebook page, Instagram page, Twitter account, whatever. You know, you're not going to anywhere that you know Twitter. Of course, you can't delete somebody else's, but you can't block them. And I only know about Twitter. I never get to see it. Well, we, we have to monitor it mostly. We don't, we, and we use it, we use it on the positive end of, for, we, de we post links to drive people, of course, to our website, but it's the same technique to drive people to a site for an incident. And so people will look for that. And Twitter is very useful. I didn't mean to cut, interrupt you, but I, I'm famous for that. Number four was where we were left off. Okay. Number four, it needs to be informative. That's the basic, you have to answer the journalistic who, what, where, why, when, and how. That's your basic journalistic interrogatives. You don't have to put yourself in jail and give away that kind of detail necessarily, but you have to at least answer basic questions. And the nice thing is if you're doing it proactively, you're taking the top of the mountain first. You know, then, then it's as opposed to if you have to do all this reactively, it takes on a defensive tenor to it. You'd rather not have, if you know you're going to be in trouble and we're, we're dealing with a couple of embezzlement cases right now. We're going to get proactive. We want the word to come out before somebody gets arrested. And the informative sometimes can be painful too, can it? Yes. yes. To the client? Because if yes. you it it's can be passionate, you're going to tell the truth. You want your truth, I, I would assume, as opposed to the elaborated truth by yes. the other well, story. That, well, that's the, uh, that's the fifth point. You need to be honest. 
And there's four ways I tell, four ways I tell my clients, and there's also four ways I've told my kids as they grew up that you can be dishonest by commission, you know, literally saying that black is white, by omission, what you leave out, that happens a lot, particularly in certain industries, and by exaggeration or by understatement. If you do any of those for the purpose of obfuscating the truth, that will be perceived as dishonest. So don't do it. Well, exaggeration and? Understatement. Understatement. We try to make our stuff very user-friendly. We talk about educating people who are crisis managers, whether they want to be or not. And it, it, even a family should have a crisis management plan of some sort. Well, I'm, I live in Southern California. You, de- you better believe I've got a plan for earthquakes. I live on the fourth floor. I have a, I'm 50 foot off the ground. I have a 60 foot knotted line in my closet and a one week supply of food and water. So. Uh, it's, you know, the one week supply is uh, one of the nice companies. I think it was Patriot Food Supply. That's who it was. Sent me a month, it lasted me like, a day and a half. No, I'm, I'm a big guy, Jonathan. I like to eat. Nobody, nobody doubts me there. But yes, you should have the food supply. And when I lived in Laguna Beach, which was a wonderful place to spend a summer, any place other than Arizona is a great place to spend the summer, the lady was so nice to show me the gas turnoff yeah. and the special tool she had Yes, for the rental house. And she showed me that and this, that. And she said, you'll know the earthquake is coming when the deer run by. <laughs> I and I thought, okay, the deer are going to run by. And the next door neighbor uh, was a kind soul. Um, she came home one day and I said, they're not eating your flowers, your roses. And she said, well, it's because of these. And she held up a little bag. I'm way off topic, but I'm having fun. And she was going up to a monastery up near, uh, I guess, El Toro. I don't know where the naval base used to be or, or a marine air base. But she was getting mountain lion dung in plastic bags. Ah. <laughs> freighted holes, and they lasted about 30 days. She'd tear that bag and drop it at either end of a rose garden, and the deer would avoid it. So after all my earthquake lessons, I thought, this is never going to happen. I got knocked out of a lazy boy chair. There's nothing like an earthquake when you're in a redwood house hanging off a cliff. Mm. I, I, I've been on one of those hanging off a cliff. <laughs> I always worried that there would be an earthquake while I was there. Fun, great time, but the most terrific part of that was everybody gathers in the street afterwards. After we, everybody's okay. And uh, I said, boy, that was something else. And one of the neighbors said, well, it wasn't like the big one. And I said, what do you mean the big one? She said, you notice we're the only street that doesn't have overhead utility lines. And I said, why? She said, well, when we all got washed down the hill the last time, they decided to bury everything when they rebuilt the street. Needless to say, I didn't enjoy yeah. <laughs> much of that last remaining week in Laguna Beach. I, I can't stress enough to viewers. I, I love this industry. I like the gun industry. As you well know, because I talk about it so much, I was involved in the gun industry before the NFA bill passed, before full automatic weapons had to be registered, and you could order them from a catalog, and you could shoot them, and you could enjoy them. I mean, a lot of people just enjoyed the Knob Creek machine gun shoot in this past weekend. Three and a half million rounds were expended at the Big Sandy shoot here in Arizona. A great thing. But you know what? Uh, those manufacturers, Uzis, you, we made, a guy made Uzis in Louisville, Kentucky. They were out of this world. Something happened. Nobody was addressing this. Somebody blamed these weapons. Uh, and, you know, to be honest, we look at mass shootings. and don't, These weapons aren't being used because they're so expensive, first off. But that whole industry went away. I don't know, probably three, 500 gun makers went away overnight. And like I said before, I don't know what your machines can be retooled to do. I don't know what your employees can be trained to do, but you've got a lot invested in this stuff. I'm being selfish. I want you around. I want, and we'll make concessions. I know you guys are doing some ammunition out there that's uh, more friendly to the environment, and I get that, but I'm selfish. I want you, if you don't go to Jonathan, which you make a mistake if you don't, at least go to his website, take in that information, plug his number in your phone, reach out to him, uh, and if you make money, and some of you make really good money at this, I don't know what his retaining f- retainer fee is, and I'm not going to ask him. I think it's worth whatever it is. Well, Look what he's done for us today for fun and for free. He's given us his time and shared these things that have taken him over 30 years to come up with, to comply. And not only that, he, they're proven. You go to the website, there's people's, not only does it say the company who utilized his services, what they had to say about it, it's got their name. You know, you can look these people up if you want to. You can reach out and contact them. 
So it's BernsteinCrisisManagement.com. Uh, when Mike, with a Y, our producer, is finished with all the editing, the phone number is going to be here available to us. Any last words for us? Yes, your listeners might want to know, because this is brand new to our business. We've been asked over and over and over again, do we do any available to anyone training? And the, up until now, while we give away a lot of information on our website, as you know, we've never formally offered an available to anyone training course. Uh, last week, we launched... The first course is called Best Practices in Crisis Management. And if, if a company buys 10 reservations in that course, it'll cost them like $43 per person. Whoa, $43, yeah. not $43,000? $43 per person. If a single individual wants to sign up for the course, it's $109. It's a one-hour course, roughly, but you will learn 30 years' worth of best practices in crisis management right there. And as a basic primer for anybody we think it's absolutely a, a must do and we made it a very digestible price for that purpose and we're that's news to me and that's exciting news to me because of the tens of dollars that we rake in promoting materials i'm going to allocate some of that to take that class and we're going to put a link for that on our youtube facebook and instagram as well uh i, I suspect somebody might send you a coupon code so you can take the class first outstanding <laughs> it, a coupon code that helps our listeners we could, do that. we could do that. We could do that. Do that as well. And uh, have you thought about attending Shot Show? No, as it, we have, frankly, um, more than you can handle. I think as much as we can. We I, I've run a virtual business for twenty five years, so I can expand it as necessary. Almost everybody who works for me is, is a top level contractor. So if I need to expand more, I do. But right now, if there's a dozen of us, pretty busy. So, uh, and I, I think, and a little bird may have told me uh, another. You're staying busy with something about the Me Too movement, aren't you? Very. Um, about one one new case a week. And yeah, folks, one new case a week. On average, sometimes more. And it's all varieties. It's cases where somebody has actually done something wrong. It's cases where they might have done might have done something wrong, and there's cases where they have not done anything wrong. But the accusation alone is can ruin you for life. And uh, so it has to be handled very carefully and. Every business, gun or any other industry, has to be getting ahead of this right now and looking at their own people and where they're at risk of being accused of Me Too. Because I guarantee you, any disgruntled employee with the beef could turn it into a Me Too thing, including reverse discrimination. I love your energy and your enthusiasm. This must be very rewarding work for you. We, we love it. We really help people. Thank you. Uh, yeah, and it, it, it shows, and I appreciate that. I just... Folks, I don't push a lot of things. This is a class you can take now. This is good. Um, we're doing this. I want you to do this to whet your appetite because, as I said, if you're in business and he's not in your, I used to say Rolodex, and I got corrected a week ago. Yeah, 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 I know. <laughs> Most of our listeners uh, don't know what a Rolodex. I should say your platinum contact list. <laughs> I'd like to see him in your contact list, and I'd like to see you as a client of his. Uh, I don't always get what I want. Look at my hair today. I could obviously tell I, I don't get what, always get what I want. <laughs> Any last words for us? No, it's uh, you only have. To, we are fond of saying that. Trying to you know operate a business without having a crisis plan is like driving a car straight at a wall without a seatbelt because you will have a crisis. It's impossible to be in business without having a crisis. And why you don't plan and train for that to mitigate damages? Plenty of statistics on how much money is saved by being ready in advance. That, just like a just like a fire drill. Yep. One last question, and I, I'm going to ask you to be honest. Do I have a chance in media? Do I have a face for radio? Do I, I, think, I, th I certainly think you've got the radio voice, and yeah, you've got, the, you've got a char your character. Did and you hear that, folks? Uh, I got a voice for radio. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know. I, we have a special friend that introduced us, yes. uh, and I want to thank him. He, well, I'm going to force him to watch this. But <laughs> that's another thing that uh, we do with some videos where I talk about life hacks, and, and one of those is contacts, and I don't... I don't manage that contact list to get things. I, I like to cl I collect people. I like to collect interesting people, fascinating people, knowledgeable people. Uh, and our mutual friend is a Harvard graduate, an attorney, a Rhodes Scholar. Don't hold that against him. Uh, he's an uh, amazing gentleman. And I like to talk to him. And we talk about everything. And he's very serious. And, 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 I, and I 
perturb him a lot because I don't always stick to the thing. But I asked he also him. He has a very dry sense of humor. <laughs> yeah, but he is funny. Yeah. I said to him, he said, what are you working on? I said, "My big, the, this has been on my mind for almost two months, the crisis management, because I get so frustrated with this industry at the lack of response or inter, what I consider an inappropriate response. And I said to him, I need a crisis management expert. He gave us that grin that you're, you've worked with him for 20 years. He gave me that grin and said, I'm sending something to your phone. And he said something that if you're in business, it's the most valuable thing ever. Would you like me to reach out and call him for you? There's nothing, in my opinion, in, if you're in business, better than a warm referral. Because yeah. you know who I was going to call. And, and the person is taking a lot of trust. It is, is sh taking a lot of trust in you because they're loaning you their reputation or their relationship when they do that. And we do the same thing with everybody we work with. We are extremely careful about picking the contractors we work with. To, and they become you know, very close members of the, of the Bernstein Crisis Management family. And and I and I appreciate that. And I can tell it's family. I, I love the website. Uh, I probably accounted for the last 500 hits on there in the last two months. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you really struck a nerve with me when you said compassion, because I, I think in, in the end all is, especially as we get older, I, I, I find myself feeling more compassion and reaching out more for others. So again, it's BernsteinCrisisManagement.com. There's a phone number. There's an email there. If you like what you heard today, send him an email. Let him know. Put those interns of his to work making read those emails. But visit the website. Look for the best practices class that I'm going to be taking. And I hope you will, too. Reach out to Mr. John Emerson. Thank you so much for spending time with us today. Thank you so much for having me on. Thank you. What are your biggest challenges in the jail? Uh, well, our biggest challenges in the jail is obviously what you're, what you're describing with the, uh, the politics. And why that's one of our bigger problems is because you don't have any control over it. As we saw in 60 Days In, we have no control over the politics they create. We have no control over the racial divides they create. Because I would much rather be able to house everybody together in one pod, no matter their race, no matter their background. Uh, but that just can't happen because of the, the gangs and the affiliations and their race. <laughs>